Um, hello everybody, thanks for um, uh, being here this morning and um, thank you Reza Pai for having us today. Uh, my name is Jean-Baptiste Levé, I am a um, typeface designer and I also teach typeface design at the um, uh, Amiens School of Arts and this, is, this will be the topic of this morning. Uh, the presentation will last like 40 minutes, uh, split in two. I will introduce you to the, what we are doing in Amiens for 20 minutes, and then we have a former student of the course, Sandrine, who will uh, talk to you about um, the project that she did at the postgraduate in Amiens. Um, as you can see, Amiens is a city that is deeply rooted with fine typography and beautiful typeface design. <laughs> Uh, so five years ago, uh, the school decided to, um, to pursue her, um, its education program with a postgraduate in typeface design. And of course, the idea was to go from this kind of thing to uh, this kind of thing. This is a plate that uh, Eric Gill cut in the um, cathedral of Amiens. So uh, we had our goals set. Um, this presentation is more or less um, a DIY type design course, how to build <coughs> your own course from scratch. Um, um, but we can, let's just put that in context. Um, teaching type design today is not the same thing as teaching type design 10 years ago. Um, the situation 10 years ago was quite different. We had um, the main schools spread all over Europe, very few courses available elsewhere. Uh, in Europe, I was, I'm thinking of KBK, of course, uh, Reading, and uh, back then, um, was, uh, is also uh, was also active. Uh, teaching typeface design five years ago uh, was also quite different. Uh, suddenly, many, many different um, type design courses started to pop up. Sort of all over the world. We had Type at Cooper in New York, um, a master's degree opening in Lausanne, Switzerland at the, at the ECAL, um, and then Leipzig, um, was there, uh, Argentina, Mexico. Um, so uh, we could see there was a clear multiplication, uh, a global spread of uh, global typeface design education. So um, what was the situation in France? Well, uh, it followed the same path. Um, Estienne was still active, uh, uh, formerly called ANCT for Atelier National de Création Typographique, changed its name to ANRT, <coughs> died like five years ago, is now respawn uh, with its new um, headmaster, Thomas, currently present. Um, and we have also um, new private schools opening um, opening their own course. So, um, um, how could Amiens uh, differentiate itself from the rest of this um, pedagogical <coughs> offer? Well, um, first, to build your own type design course, you need uh, experiences and know-how, and that's maybe what uh, the most in distinctive um, thing of the course. Uh, it's not really based on dogmas or conceptuality. It's not really based on universitarian research uh, like in other places, but um, it's made with um, a staff of very, very different backgrounds, and this is one of the, the key aspects of the, of the course. So uh, maybe some of you know Sebastian Morigem. He's a He's a publishing, uh, he's an editor, uh, a collection um, leader at uh, Epsilon Editor. We'll see a presentation of one of those books later on uh, this week. Uh, Patrick Dohan <coughs> is a graphic designer specialized in books, currently practicing here in Amsterdam. Um, I hope most of you already know who Titus Nemet is. Uh, and Alice as well, both of them are, um, uh, are former Reading graduates. Um, all of these people are undertaking PhDs, and uh, the only one who isn't is me. Uh, <laughs> I'm, um, I'm a typeface designer, I do retail and custom typefaces, and uh, this is the, 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 ba the basic crew. Um, we have 
many, many various approaches. Mm -hmm. uh, Verena just underlined the fact that students had to choose between two different uh, opinions from teachers, and that that's actually uh, something very common during the studies. Um, so some of us have a very clear vision on research and theory. Um, others have an experience on practice. Uh, some have an, um, <coughs> are very uh, well trained in the globalization or the global approach to type design. And um, all of us are either former STN or Reading graduates. Um, to my eyes, one of the a very important thing um, when teaching to um, when teaching type design is that you have to work with a very small group of students. I can't imagine um, being in a in a big hall and having to teach something hand to hand. So um, the Amiens, uh, the class of Amiens is uh, maximum five students. Most of the time it's four. Students stay one and a half year. That's sort of awkward type of uh, schedule, but um, it allows some uh, offbeat, um, something that's a bit more offbeat and focused and allows them to, um, to be uh, well and awake after the postgraduate um, when they are looking for jobs or want to pursue their education. So uh, let's, let's get hands on um, the, the main thing. Um, I couldn't imagine uh, learning typeface design without calligraphy. I'm not saying it's something you need to stay close to the, the rest of your education or your professional life, but uh, that's how I was taught and that's how I am teaching and the rest of us teachers also are. So um, calligraphy is not uh, is nothing but a beginning. So um, students are um, uh, are encouraged to get engaged uh, with uh, chancery, with um, a humanistic minuscule, <coughs> and every kind of model that they could afterward use, not as a formal reference, but uh, merely as a, um, as a hint on how to see and feel the quality of strokes, whether they are uh, made with a feather or bezier curves. Um, gesturality is also a key factor. It all comes to um, this romantic idea of you need to feel what a stroke is, and uh, and uh, expressive and gestural calligraphy uh, helps that. Um, other tools are used, like just plain paper and scissors. Um, the purpose of this kind of exercises is to help students focus on um, a very precise shape to get them an idea that uh, you don't you need to work big, you need to simplify, and <coughs> you need to uh, make choices. And uh, paper and scissors don't allow for imprecision. Um, this kind of exercise also helps them explore uh, the various as aspects and parameters of typeface design, like weight, width, x height, contrast, gray. Um, <coughs> this one is, is made in a quite unconventional way because um, um, you know that letter carving should normally be made in stone or at least in a, in a very uh, hard surface. Um, the letter carving that one of us teachers is uh, teaching in Amiens is made in, uh, in a special kind of form, so there is no carving in the hard, hard boy sense. But it's merely like cutting into a three-dimensional shape. Um, we're sticking to it so far, but uh, I hope we'll get the students to hit some stones um, sooner or later. Um, and of course, type design is about drawing. And by drawing, I mean like a lot of drawing, like more drawing every day, again and again and again. It's not like bicycle. Type design is something you need to practice and entertain as a skill because it gets away otherwise, and you forget it much, much sooner than you think. So um, if you have one and a half year, or if you have one week, or if you have two years, um, key thing is practicing. You you can't achieve anything without practicing and without drawing. So that's what we do. 
Uh, I use uh, I use a very well-known tool uh, developed here, uh, which is called Type Hooker, which is something like a, a type design exercise generator. Um, this is done very very early in the course because uh, I want the students to work hard and I want them <coughs> to uh, step up their drawing skills very very quickly so that we don't lose time afterwards with the Bézier. Um, another tool that we use as teachers is um, the use of uh, other people's work as a base as a basis for um, the creation of typeface design, of new typeface designs. Um, a few years ago, uh, the Amiens Library was given uh, an entire fund from Jacques de Villers. Jacques de Villers is a, is a kind of offbeat graphic designer from the 50s, 60s in France. He was very active in book design, and uh, he also partake in uh, Rencontre de Lure, another type design association. And he gave, um, so we got his entire library, including um, a few of his own type designs. So the interesting thing about revivals is that um, you, it's a very uh, good pretext uh, to get yourself uh, used to the various tools, digital tools and techniques in typeface designs. So that's what the students do. They try to understand, to step in the step in the feet of another person, try to understand uh, the person and his or her work, and um, not only trying to reproduce, but to enhance uh, the work. And um, as I stated beforehand, uh, I, I work professionally, and a realistic context is a very, very meaningful thing for me. Uh, I don't believe in a, in a type typeface that is not used. So uh, one of the exercises that we have there is the redesign of, the, of a logotype. Of, in that case, it's a newspaper masthead. And um, I've learned that it's a very common exercise later on in the professional life, and it's a very useful exercise as a student to, to act as if a client just popped in, chimed in, and uh, was saying, hey, I have this logotype. I want three different, I want it to be redone in three different ways. One is just correct it. Just see what's working, see what isn't. Um, then it's enhance it, so um, uh, retain the key factors, what, <coughs> is, uh, what is properly drawn, but what is also maybe different or quickly, but uh, gives uh, the nameplate its, its own style and then uh, design it uh, from the ground up. So this kind of exercise um, also uh, helps reducing um, uh, some, some fears students may have towards what is originality, what is creativity in typeface design. Most, most of them come in and think they need to find a new design for a serif, or they need to put, I'm sorry, very not, they need to put gigantic ink traps and the thing is, I'm, <laughs> I'm fine. I know you are. Um, and the thing is, I'm trying to, to steer them away from this kind of idea and to find interesting and beautiful shapes um, elsewhere. Well, not all name plates are badly designed. Um, yeah, this is an example from Larina, uh, an Italian newspaper, which is. Well, I pick. I get to pick the, the mastheads, of course, pick the most interesting ones. Um, if you want to build, to do your own typeface design course, you need to have a very strong uh, library uh, to help support the research of the students. Not only the the, the reading, but also uh, the seeing of the of the shapes. And uh, for that, we have a nice little library which is specialized in graphic design, book design, and typeface design. Uh, with the help of the library at the school, uh, we get to um, get to acquire uh, a pretty decent fund of books, not only new, but also ancient. And by ancient, I mean uh, pre-20th pre century typeface specimens. Um, this is also helpful for reference all the time. Um, 
this <coughs> shape reminds me of this alphabet by this designer from like a hundred years ago. Um, will you teach type design today with master classes and workshops? Um, just from a plain student point of view, uh, it's yet another um, opinion that uh, the students need to deal with. Uh, the opinion of someone who is not from the teaching staff, but someone who has a different background. Uh, last year, uh, we were lucky enough to have um, uh, Albert Breton, famous French typeface designer. He's not really active anymore, but he still draws, and he's still up and about to share his, his experiences with the students. Um, having external people um, help enrich the global teaching. <coughs> and Albert is charming. Uh, but we didn't have, uh, we were lucky not to have only Albert, but many, many different people. Um, it's not supposed to work as a closed tank, so uh, invitations go on and on. We, we used to invite a lot of people, we will do in the future. Um, don't try to read that entire entirety. Um, another um, initiative that, uh, that we think is required is to organize um, <coughs> the life or the community life of type design, and this goes through organizing exhibitions, lectures, and conferences. For the past four years now, we've set up uh, um, one day or two days conferences about one specific topic. This usually happens very, very early uh, in the course, around November, and we have a specialist lecturing on one specific, um, like, um, um, a specific topic, either a designer or a time period. Um, last year was about uh, Pierre Simon Fournier, for instance, and we had also this exhibition about the work of Albert Breton. Um, here you can see again a fascinated crowd. Um, those are um, stills from uh, the Fournier study day that uh, Sébastien uh, organized last year. Uh, unfortunately, there won't be a, there won't be a, a study um, day this year because Sebastian is busy with his PhD. But uh, hopefully next year it will be we'll have something about Dido um, in partnership with the Amiens City Library. We are um, we were lended uh, a few books from their fund, and uh, this is also very helpful uh, for reference. But uh, you may ask yourself, um, what's, how does that come out to all together? Well, over the past five years, um, students have successfully brought out um, a few of their designs, <coughs> as, uh, one of which you will get to know better uh, in like how many minutes now? <coughs> Right now, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I conclude by asking the question: uh, Who are we teaching anyway? It's not students is kind of a blurry uh, thing. So are we teaching training typeface designer, future typeface designer, future typographers, future art directors, future researchers? Uh, to be honest, I'm I don't have the answer. Maybe Sandrine will tell you a bit more about it. But um, as long as um, there is a need for new designs and as long as there is um, some um, consistency in, in going on with that course, um, we'll be here and welcoming um, a group of international students every one and a half year. Thank you.
So I am one example of the postgraduates. Um, uh, uh, I will introduce you all the process of the work that I did for, the, for this time. So at the beginning, we have to yeah, did a lot of information to define a project for the next 18 months. And uh, in French, we've got uh, a motto is uh, to break down open doors. It means uh, state the obvious. And I think it can be usual when you learn a new discipline. So I've got uh, open door preoccupation. Uh, it was how it's possible to design a running an expressive but not disturbing running text. Because as you know, uh, readers have to be focused on the meanings and not on, on the letter forms. Um, so, um, in my research, once I read uh, Roger Excoffon personal uh, documents the, uh, written uh, by or with Gérard Blanchard. And uh, this is about optical size, and it was a good, um, the good way for me. I will translate, translate it. So, for small and medium text, you will really need legibility. And in the opposite, for big size or display, uh, the design is not function, but pretty, so the priority could be the aesthetic. So the hierarchy of the size provides the priority and accentuates the function features or the sensitive shapes. So I found it was very good way to just begin uh, my work. So I decided to, display, to design a display, a text, and a caption size, each of them with Roman and Italian. And uh, I've got some um, references about this preoccupation. Both of them are, you, you know them, I think. Um, Gerhard Unger, uh, is, uh, he used to design a lot of uh, very legible uh, uh, typefaces, uh, often for size road or newspaper, like the Swift. But in the uh, other side, we are really able to recognize his work because you really find uh, his own structure with like a signature. And with another really uh, different approach, approach uh, Roger X. Goffin uh, explored a lot of uh, different uh, styles, a lot of uh, display, and some of them like the antique olive for winning text. And the antique uh, olive is a very good example because um, he, he, he revealed the contrast on the top of the letter because he thought we used to read the top of the letter. <coughs> and uh, in this way, the ornamental features are used for um, functionality. And so he, he, he modified the traditional proportions but stay close, the, close to the Roman skeleton. And in fact, uh, today it's still a successful uh, typeface, maybe because he find the balance and uh, I, I thought, I discovered when I uh, learned uh, uh, type design that in typography the balance is very important and I think you find a very daring balance. Um, and uh, 10 years before, uh, in the 50s, he designed with uh, François Gano, or François Gano designed with Roger X. Uh, the, the Gano, uh, the Vendôme. Uh, as you can imagine, it's in front of me. And um, uh, he, he, he really gave me uh, also inspiration because uh, it was in link with my preoccupation. The, the Vendôme uh, was a result. Uh, François Gano wanted to modernize the Garamond. Uh, and he did it because uh, the Vendôme is very alive. He gave it a lot of uh, vibration. Um, um, and it was really dark. And with, uh, and um, he, he was successful for only 20 years, maybe not too much for running text because designer or printer didn't really know how to use it. And, um, and also, it really interests me uh, to focus on the, the Latins. Uh, it was in the, in the 90th century, uh, 19th century? Um, Painter and lithograph used to draw and paint uh, Latins, and with these uh, technical tools, they gave uh, a lot of freedom and expressive um, shapes to the to these letter forms. So uh, it's really interest, 
tip me also because uh, how with uh, a, 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 with these shapes with Latin how I can design a running text uh, for to do it to do this that will be a challenge because I have to do a lot of choices. Um, so in parallel we uh, made some exercise and um, uh, I like this we like show. Um, Jean Baptiste, because uh, it was like sculpture with a scissor and, um, and photocopy. It was a very uh, huge size. But uh, at this time, some of my teachers told me, uh, Sandrine, uh, it looked like uh, Rera Winger. Uh, a lot of influences. So uh, I said, yeah, maybe it's true. So maybe I have to stop to look too much references and to try to, to find my uh, uh, personal approach. So I tried to draw a lot. As you can see, I still have uh, influences because I have really um, uh, massive uh, shape uh, part on the on the top of the letter. It's really dark, and I still in mind to have a, 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 like a Latin a triangular uh, serif. So after I make some digitizations, and I I, um, I, I really like to design first with. Um, bold or black uh, uh, letter, it was easier for me like a sculpture just to define a, a, a shapes. So then uh, I've got some, uh, my first uh, optical sizes, um, but it wasn't the best way because uh, I, uh, I lose a lot of time when I change something in one size, I have to change everywhere. I, uh, I was not enough experimented to try this way. So the idea was to focus first on the, um, the text size and when it will be uh, stabilized, stabili stabi yeah. when it will be done, <laughs> I will uh, uh, continue on the, the caption and display size. And in May, uh, we went to Reading and uh, I was lucky to meet uh, Jerry Leonidas and he told me a very sage yeah. advice. He told me, he told me my uh, typefaces were, was very too much, um, the, too many IDs inside. So the ID, he told me really uh, you have to keep just one ID and uh, retain the phone uh, ID for the for next fonts. So. For the, the rest of the time, the next 80, uh, eight months, I only have uh, the feeling to make the shapes quieter. So I smooth the, the letter, uh, I confirm uh, terminals, I make the connection, the connection stiffer, I edit out flared stem, I make some curves and features quieter, and I uh, homogenized counters, and it's quicker. But then you can see uh, the result of the, the the text size. And of course, uh, in ink, I, I work on the italic. It was uh, for me the tricky part of uh, uh, the entire the entire um, family. And uh, I didn't really know how to uh, put the. Um, uh, the the sh shape part. So I think at the beginning I make too much of this. So also I have to make it quieter. But in fact, with the, the italic, I didn't really know what I expected from it, and in link with the, the Roman. So I really try a lot of things. And uh, at the end, I choose to have a, a similar width width between the Roman and the italic, and also a, a similar typographic typographic grade. Um, so now then the, the, the text size is uh, stabilized, uh, now I can focus on the caption size. So um, I knew I have to do some uh, optical modification, but I was um, questioned about the utilization of the, the caption. And um, I was thinking it was more, it will be more for notes and discontinuous uh, reading. So I, I was um, um, uh, questioned about the serif and the, the utility of the serif. And as you know, uh, there is still a struggle about uh, the, 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 the serif or not. Maybe I don't have the time to explain. Uh, yeah, I, I, I choose to serif less for the discontinuous reading. Um, and uh, so for, First, I try totally uh, like a, a, 
a lineal and uh, it didn't really fit with the text and I was, uh, for me it was important, the family question. Um, so um, I was thinking about uh, also a flirt stem, but I've got some uh, technical troubles. I, uh, as you can see with the laser print at home or at school, uh, I've got some, um, yeah, the, the, the serif was uh, rounded on the print you can see on the laser print, and I, I was lucky because uh, at the end I've got the opportunity to print with offsets, so it's more precise for sure. I've got some uh, cut there. And uh, here you can see uh, the caption size. Uh, uh, um, it was fine because I was very f uh, close uh, to uh, something very straightforward, very raw, and it was uh, the first idea uh, I want to have for the for the for this caption size. And I'm quickly I'm quick, quickly now about just the combination between the the itaip, So it was the, the same idea, something very uh, dark. And now also the, the display size, uh, it was like a gift at the end to design it because it was more easy, uh, but not so much um, uh, uh, need about the legibility. And I was really so, uh, very something uh, in mind at the beginning, like uh, I saw you with the Vendôme, so I, I designed it very quickly and uh, I was thinking maybe I can try something more different. I try some combination between uh, on the on the left you can see Roman serif with a uh, italic serif less on, on the right the opposite, but uh, it wasn't a good way to just have so many uh, different uh, combination. It was just a way to escape uh, and to make choices. So I decided, in fact, to and it was surprising. I didn't really expect this, but it's fine. Uh, to have uh, also a flat stem, and uh, he, uh, he, yeah. and um, um, uh, one of the first classification in 1924 from Francis Thibodeau is uh, principally based on the, the serif, not on the, than on the structure. And you can see the Roman Elsevier parts. Inside there is a subfamily, uh, this is the Latin, and inside you can see free stem and uh, also triangular uh, serif. And uh, this classification defined the Latin and it gave me um, the freedom to choose uh, three different uh, terminals for the, the totally the entire uh, family. And uh, also one really important aspect, of course, of uh, this work uh, were the, um, the optical size. So um, uh, one size never fits all. I'm a bit traditional for that. And um, uh, of course, uh, I've got the same structure, the same skeleton, and the same axis uh, between all of the three um, sides. And uh, for the modification, I follow uh, Tim Arendt's uh, instruction that he gave five years ago at the uh, Atipai. And um, I will, uh, we will have a glance step by step very <coughs> quickly. Uh, so, of course, the, the first uh, thing, if you really need um, uh, uh, larger width with a, a caption, you need more white inside and also a, a looser spacing. Of course, we also need uh, bigger high case, XAs, uh, for the caption size, and, uh, and uh, small extenders. Uh, we also need to uh, increase the, the weight uh, for um, uh, caption size. The, the caption is very darker than the display. And we, we also, I also need to enlarge uh, counters. Sometimes I, uh, I have to totally uh, change the design of some letters, like for the K or the J on the right. And for the, the capital, I choose a classical proportion, as you can see for the display size, some later are very small. Um, but for the caption size, all of them are more homogeneous, um, homogeneous uh, to have more white uh, inside, it's smaller. And also I have to reduce the stroke contrast. The, 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 the caption is almost uh, without, uh, without contrast. And uh, this one's my first to unfast or suppress the fitteries to also make very important uh, choices for some uh, ages. 
And here you can, you can have a look uh, on the, the complete family. Uh, it was a very uh, uh, good, uh, it was a very uh, good uh, work because I have really to think about the family and and choices about the the, the, the size and the, the the utility for uh, breeding. And uh, to to do it at uh, Amiens, it was very nice because uh, 18 months is very it's very long. We we have the time and the the, the support of the teacher are, uh, they are really investigate. So it was a uh, very um, uh, perfect and. Uh, In fact, how it's possible to design an expressive but not disturbing even in text. And I think it was maybe just naive at the beginning to ask me. It was just uh, the, the solution was just to design a, a personal uh, typeface and just find uh, uh, something, yeah, just personal. Questions? Questions just to let you know, um, <coughs> someone has a has a printed specimen, so you can judge by yourself and not on the screen how uh, how work about optical sizes do work in print. Um, thank you very much.